Um, hey guys. Hey everybody. <laughs> Uh, Mike and Martin has left a, led a valiant effort in, in flattening the playing field for women in soccer uh, through her Global Goals World Cup. Uh, Ms. Martin is now spreading the word on the urgency of achieving uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals through Gender Equal Lens. Uh, the Global Goals World Cup is held internationally and is in the world's leading social development goals activation for women soccer players and also is taking place tomorrow, but more about that later. And then uh, secondarily, uh, let me introduce uh, Nikolai costa Valdau, who uh, is renowned for his portrayal of Jamie Lannister in the uh, HBO hit series, Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, he's also an outspoken uh, advocate for gender equality and climate change. And he is both a UN Development Goodwill Ambassador for Gender Equality and Climate Change, and also an ambassador for the Global Goals World Cup. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Today's conversation is going to center around how the fight for gender equality in sports. Can I say, I just think that that bike thing you have when you walk in, that whole <laughs> That's pretty cool. You have your own bike shop, <laughs> bicycle shop. Oh yeah, we have our own little uh, bike room. We, yeah. we do our little part for uh, getting that into here. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> well, today we are trying to say what how gender equality can educate humanity in uh, uh, the urgency of the Sustainable Development Goals and hitting the 2030 agenda. Uh, uh, so let's talk about how gender equality can save the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it's a very I, lofty goal. Yeah, yeah. Somehow I just want to go and talk about the bicycles right now when you ask about <laughs> no, no, that. Like, <laughs> there's a super it's, it's freedom all... for women also biking in the yeah. world. So, um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. all connected. That's the thing about, that's why I think the 17, you mentioned that early. Most people know the, the climate action number yeah. five, but what about the other 16? Um, and the, the thing is those 17 goals were, were kind of voted on by people from all over the world. And they're all connected. You can't just take one thing out and then... And the beauty of it is, is if you... You know, when you do better one place, you will automatically do better in, in the other 16. And one of them, of course, gender equality. There's... I don't know... You, I'm sure you know all the numbers, but it's staggering still to this day how many places... I think it's 50-plus countries that still have uh, legislation that discriminates against women based on their gender. Yeah. You have uh, this proper, uh, this prop, prop, okay, this prop. <laughs> this uh, prop, we're all Danish here, so we have, uh, it's uh, English as our second. I blame this guy on my, I'm suddenly forgetting English. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I would when it comes to education, for example, you, I mean, we all know Malala, she's done an amazing job to, to increase, but, but girls also uh, more often than boys uh, not allowed to go to school. The fact is, whenever women are empowered, uh, whenever it, equality happens, those places, boom, they do better. Uh, and then, of course, and you shouldn't do it because we all do better. You should do it because it's a basic human right. We all need to be free. Yeah. Uh, and th the fact that you don't have a dick should not exclude you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, uh, very, this topic is very dear to my heart. I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm going to ask you just for a second because this is actually a, a touching moment because uh, we we just Rasmus we just met each other out and 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 uh, talking about uh, who are the people who stands up for for gender equality in the world and and uh, of course uh, women but there we also definitely see a lot of uh, men but we the first ones we started to recognize was also men that was fathers or daughters as Nikolai is. Uh, I think you know, that deep understanding that the equality in the world is super, super unfair, super unreal. But the moment is, you have to work. I just found out two days ago that I'm going to be the father of a little baby girl in March. <laughs> Maybe I'll call you for some tips. So my wife is back there really <laughs> oh, not liking that comment, by the way. So, <laughs> but anyways, it's very it's relevant. Old Anyone else? No. This is, uh, <laughs> this is I think this is very... That's an trouble. announcement. Wow. That? <laughs> that's brave. 
Well, it's it's late enough. So oh, okay. okay, yeah, we're not there yet. But I do I do think that the whole idea of uh, for us using sport is that use sport is in many ways uh, symbolic is uh, and football in many ways is a place where it has been very male dominated and so for us to go in and try to enter that field. But then also thinking about what do we really want ourselves as as uh, as women in the world of football. So for us, it was okay. Let's be loud. Let's try to make a World Cup, right? So that whole idea of making it a World Cup, there was I think there's space. I don't know if you guys, but I, I love World Cups. But I can also see we've had the same World Cups for quite a long time, right? We haven't developed them so much. So playing to the idea of saying, and then if you ask any woman around the world, the reason why many of them don't do sports is because they feel, I mean, they feel they can't leave their home. They can't, uh, and not, not leave their home, but they don't, they feel guilty if they leave their kids and their family and their studies and stuff like that. Um, but if you add purpose to it, it becomes a whole different story for them to come out because they have a reason to come out and they have a reason to come out together. And then... I, I I always say that if we can get all women active, then the numbers are that that 98% of their children will be active, and then you really have solved a lot of things for health goal three. And that's a amazing segue into actually talking about the uh, <laughs> global goal uh, global goals World Cup. Uh, you're the referee tomorrow. Uh, I it's. What is it and how does it help raise awareness to the sustainable development goals specifically? Can we show a video? Yes, <laughs> so I am. Very... I know they have it somewhere. <laughs> we have a video to play. Yeah. We are the Global Goals World Cup, an activist football championship. We use the power of sports to connect girls and women around the world to take action on the United Nations 17 Global Goals. Our teams are motivated by the love for football and the desire to change the world. This is not your average World Cup. Sometimes, if you want to change the world, you need to change the rules. So we did. Our champions know that scoring global goals takes more than football skills. It takes action, creativity, and the power to mobilize others. We give four different points for action, creative style, crowd, and goal score. Like Spectacular Aid, UAE, playing to raise awareness of how cigarettes damage marine life. Hootie Champs, Kenya, walks from village to village, playing football to foster a democratic and peaceful society, Equality League, USA. They are fighting to end gender discrimination in sport and challenge the stadium ban for women in Iran. As a Global Goals World Cup partner, you will leverage your sustainable development mission to join a community that is changing lives. Olafur Eliasson manifesting the light and hope in the unique Global Goals World Cup trophy and Little Sons as medals for winning teams. UNDP working with us to put the Global Goals on the agenda in communities and for decision makers all across the world. SAP amplifying the global impact by bringing purpose to innovation and pushing for gender balance in the tech communities. Our hosting partners understand the power of sport to turn the global goals into a citizen agenda. We are building a new World Cup for a better world. So far, we have taken the ball to five continents, engaged thousands of women, and enlisted the support of national governments, ambitious companies, and forward-thinking organizations. Each year, we join up in New York City during the Onga Week to honor our Global Goals champions. We will play until the Global Goals have been reached. Wow. That's good. <laughs> it's such an amazing program. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if you want to tell us more about like, some of the things that's been happening since 2016 when you started it. I think the biggest thing that we've seen, I mean, over these years is that to, to uh, with these women is that first you as a team, okay, you make a team and you, you don't necessarily come from football or whatever community, you don't expect that you're going to play in a World Cup for sure. So, and then you have to take an action and what does that really mean to take an action? And, um, and uh, convincing everyone else also to, you know, you look at these and and is it okay that you collect cigarette butts on the beach? Does it qualify enough? So I think that whole thing of, of developing a, a new framework where people can say, 
uh, action can look like this. You know, you can have women walking around schools in, in Madrid and teaching them about biodiversity and, and, uh, and making sure that they will plant small little plants all over the city for the bees. And these type of things is, is for us, is understanding them, qualifying that has been beautiful to see from the curiosity in the beginning to suddenly now we see so many teams doing just amazing things around the world. Yeah, and I guess this is also a bigger question, but how did you guys get involved with each other? Oh, she, she asked me <laughs> if I wanted to referee. That was very simple. Would you be I, my I mean, I, I, I'm a huge soccer fan. I, you know, as many are where we come from. And uh, <laughs> I think maybe the U.S. is one of the only places where the, the women's soccer has really exploded. I think it seems to be even more popular than the men's. Maybe because the women are the only one who qualified. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but it's not like that the rest of the world. But soccer is a sport that so many people love, and also women. But it's been, as you said, in many parts of the world, kind of been excluded. So I think the idea, there's something about going to a sports event where you can just have fun. And the social class goes out the window, and we would also like gender to go out the window. You're just there to have fun. And I think the, the brilliant thing here is that it's still the core purpose when people come together for the global goals. It's still to have fun. Mm. And you can actually have fun and do something good and interesting as well, as, they, as these teams all show. So yes, it can be fun to uh, make a positive impact on the world. Um, our brain works better when we have fun, yeah. right? So, yes. And our brain, our creativity works better when we move. I mean, Nietzsche says, never trust an idea that wasn't done in movement. So I hope you have some good movement in this office. <laughs> and, and, and another thing, you know, because you, Nicolai, is a gigantic uh, climate adv advocate. You've been doing work in Peru. You've been working with Google to track the glaciers in, uh, in Greenland with uh, Google Maps. There's yes. been <laughs> the Maldives. There's been comedy shows in Denmark. There's a lot of work that's been done. How's the fight for uh, gender equality and climate change interlinked? And maybe it's either of you to answer that question. Well, I think, as I said before, they're all linked together. And I think that the, there's no question that the challenges we face on globally and locally are huge, and we need everyone to take part. So the fact that in many parts of the world you all make, you exclude a huge part of the population is is counterproductive. Uh, we need everyone involved. Uh, so that's why gender equality is so important. Uh, and cli I mean, climate is of course the one of the seventeen that's the um, in some ways, the, the odd one out, um, because the facts are, if you look back 50 years into today, we're actually doing incredibly, we're doing much better on every parameter. When it comes to fighting poverty, when it comes to gender equality, when it comes to all these things, we're doing much better, but we're fucking up the climate. And if we don't get that one dealt with, then all, of, all bets are off, because the consequences in, on all the other parts of our life or will be catastrophic. So that's why I, I, I mean, I have a small platform now and that's, I mean, my whole thing is just to try to give voice to, help give voice to the people who really know what they're talking about. Uh, to, to quote a, a young girl from uh, Sweden, you should listen to the science, right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> and I think you and I had a conversation about how climate change also disparately impacts women in, in rural areas and all that. Uh, of course, I mean, often because they are the ones that are responsible for certain things, or they're often responsible for feeding the families or bringing in water and these things. And then, of course, if there suddenly isn't wa any water to bring in, you are suddenly uh, not only responsible for yourself, but you're also responsible for your, for your uh, family. So there's, there's, a, there's lots of that that shows that we are super impacted uh, uh, under climate uh, disasters, uh, women are. So, um, yeah. I was just thinking because one of the big things is is what we consume. We, we spend too much of everything, right? We know that. And uh, I was just thinking about how many people in here have a phone that's more than two years old? Oh, <laughs> 
we, I mean, <laughs> we just, we don't need to change the phone every year, but we, it happens all the time, right? Most of us will get a new phone every year. I think yours is older than mine. <laughs> mine is over two years. <laughs> no, but I mean, my, but I'm you not could, trying to point fingers, but know. I'm thinking we also live in a world where you see it, one of the biggest problems I have for me, also having been part of this traveling the world, is that how quickly we point fingers at others and how quickly we judge. And, you know, you know, if you had those, and it's, you know, there's an, an amazing power in, in youth that they're taking to the streets. It's just, it's the best thing ever. But we, there's a danger that it becomes, uh, you know, the young people against the old people or the, uh, you know, that part of the world against that part of the world. You saw it with the, uh, when it came to the, 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 four, uh, the fires in the Amazon. So it was like, well, why do they do this? Well, they do it because they have to, because there's also something called survival. And it's, I mean, it's all complex. So I, I, I think when it comes to the core of what I've found out anyway, and it comes all, and that also have, have, has to do with all these things, is we have to take personal responsibility in our own choices in this world. How, we, how I treat my kids, how I consume, mm. how often I change my stupid phone. <laughs> because it, it all matters. And it doesn't, and the only thing that doesn't help, if someone tells me I'm an asshole, I don't care, I don't wanna know about these people. I mean, I know in this country it's so extreme now, right? Because it's the, in a, you think that you're the good guys and you also know who are the bad guys. And they think you're the bad guy, I mean, it's ridiculous. Because I don't think you'll find anyone who doesn't want the world to be a better place for their kids. And that is something to unite about mm -hmm. over, right? Sorry, I'm, why am I... And I, th and I, th I think that... But <laughs> I think it's a, it's a good story, and I think it is, it's just a thing for all of us is saying, okay, you know, uh, when you and they were going to implement the, the, the goals, uh, we were a, very, a, a playful sports organization in a way out of Denmark, and we were like, okay, what, what, what does it really mean? How do we do it? And uh, figuring out these ways that you, where you, as whatever it is you, you are in, that you can put the, the goals uh, before, in a sense, I don't know if I want to say before everything else, because I wouldn't do that in, before my own daughter or something. But I think that you really have to put the goals in front of all the, the decisions or most of the decisions you do in your life. Uh, and I think that we are just, in a sense, examples of that. We're just people that kind of just said, okay, I'm going to use sport and I'm going to make a football with the goals on so everywhere I go you can communicate it and I go, I'm going to activate women. And that is because goal five was for the first time and it was actually really, really debated if it was going to make it into the 17 goals or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that, that uh, it showed us at that time um, it is crucial that we step up for that one. Um, we also tried, there was a bunch of people that tried to see if we could get phys physical education under goal four, because that would mean that 60 million girls around the world should have access to sports that they don't have today. So I think that, again, with the knowledge and learning that you all have, we all have, and then trying to step up for all the goals or some of the goals. What about you, Nikolai? Uh, how does a guy that comes from a TV series where they're beset by global climate change playing the bad guy? Now we're in the real world where climate change is real, but you're the good guy. What decided you to get involved? <laughs> that was a long question. <laughs> Did it make sense? <laughs> now, good thing there's so many people watching because <laughs> I have to behave. <laughs> I don't know. I just I song songed out. Just repeat that question. <laughs> you ask me why I'm what what? All right. Let's just say you are known for being an actor in a TV series where there's a fantasy kingdom beset by climate change, the winter, and you're playing the bad guy. But now in the real world. The planet is on fucking fire, and you're the good guy fighting this climate battle. What was the catalyst? For Did not started? get better the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, the world is not on fire, right? So, so, so I think that's also that thing about when I was young. If we didn't act, then the rainforest Amazon would be gone by 2000. That was what we were told. So everybody was getting a piece of rainforest for Christmas. I don't know who 
got made that money? I got one. <laughs> yeah, I got one too, and someone got paid somewhere. My point is, one of the, the things that, that, that is so, this is a long-term commitment, right? We have to change our ways fundamentally. It's not because the world, the world is going to be here when we're gone. Um, we might, it might be very different, but it's going to be here. The thing is, how is it going to be? That's what we have to decide uh, by our actions. Um, you know, I was just in Peru with the UNDP because, and one of the things we wanted to go down to, to the Amazon, and, and, and the, the purpose was kind of, the headline was, the Amazon is on fire. And I, I like, I'm sure all of you saw those images and you get really upset and it's, it's, it, you get angry and you go, what the hell? That's insane. And then you go down there and you realize, well, yeah, there are fires for sure. And it's deforestation is a big problem. But we have to, before we just go crazy and you end up having like, was it the French prime minister and the Brazilians getting into some infight, you realize this is they're like kids. This is ridiculous because it's, it, the, 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 the core issues are much more fundamental. And it's about the, uh, we live in a global world. Like you look, look at Brazil, look at why they deforested. Well, they needed to raise a lot of cattle because there are a lot of people up north who want cheap hamburgers. So we, do you want to change that? Well, we have to change our ways, the way we consume. Um, you have, I met farmers in, in Peru and they are clearing forests by, and they burn it down, but they do it because they have to survive. It's the only way they can make a living. And anyone who knows anything about farming, clearly it's not, a very uh, economical way to have to, 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 to clear a forest, to, to grow your crops. They only do that because that's the only way to, to basically just make a living. So at the core of all this is inequality on a global scale. Mm. And that's what we have to deal with. And that's what you have to deal with. You are also, you know, you're consumers. You can make your choices. You work for one of the biggest companies in the world. You, you have a lot of power. And uh, just have to choose to use it and yield it for a better world, right? Yeah, I mean, things are happening for... I'm I sorry, I didn't mean to put you on, 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 but I just had to react to your... I, I know. Your description You're of my life's guy. work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you did that television show, and now you're here. So what? You're the bad guy. Now you're the good guy. It's okay. It's okay. I can definitely handle it. It was probably a... Is he like that at home as well? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of policies do you think we need to be putting in place to ensure a global gender equality push that allows us to reach the sustainable development goals um, by 2030? do we need, you know? You said corporations need to get involved. I 100% agree, um, but- Oh, I need, I said everyone needs to get involved. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and, and everyone, and everybody, everybody needs to feel that they belong in the world also, because there's a lot of people that don't, and that is uh, equality in general is a big, a big, big reason for that. I was just together with this morning, I, we have, uh, in our Global Goals World Cup, we have, uh, uh, we play around the world and then we have some of those teams coming in and playing in the finals and we're playing tomorrow and uh, this morning I was together with a team from India and a team from Saudi Arabia together at a school with some students and and uh, hearing the, the conversations uh, I mean eight-year-old uh, girls that were super aware of what inequality was and the, the big things they could all say at eight years old and all of them they could say that that if people don't have uh, money to uh, to uh, be in a place. So we were talking about if two teams were playing against each other and what would be uh, uh, uneven. Of course, we also said if one had a big goal or a small goal, that would also be uneven. But they definitely also talked about hunger. Uh, if you had, didn't have, you know, the access to food, if you didn't have access to the field, if you didn't have access to clothes, or all of the things in the inequality world that is all things that can be solved at a governmental level. So, and of course, in a sense, com companies are pushing those uh, uh, around the world of trying to see how can we solve them on, on a bigger issue and a bigger scale and, and on an a individual scale. Um, but these are, I think that, that it has to be on a gov governmental level that we can just look at the rules the way that they are set right now. I mean, if, if I stay in sports, and if you look at any sports federation pretty much around the world, it's almost impossible for a woman, if you haven't, 
I mean, if you haven't dedicated your entire life to say that I'm going to try to make it to become just a board member in a in a football club, then there's op- there's no way to make the way up there. So that means, and all the structures within a company, how people can move, how you can move when it is not only gender for, uh, uh, but also inequality of how can you in in poverty in schools. We have so many schools that have so much money, especially also in this country where it becomes a storytelling that these are the most prestigious school in the world. And my whole body goes like, oh my God, you've not been to Mumbai and seen how these students with very little, they suddenly explode in brilliantness. You know, so so understanding that it's not just one school because they have the, the story. Let us these for God's sake, share stories with someone else. Next year is somebody else you can talk about, not just talking about the big American schools suddenly being the, the, or the big English school being the ones, but pick new schools and promote and talk about in the message. So, so yeah, change governmental and change in our storytelling as well. It's big. You recently participated in a climate awareness campaign where you said that, um, that the fight against climate action, uh, the fight for climate action is the biggest no-brainer. Um, what, in what way is climate action a no-brainer? I've... Well, it's because if we, because it goes back to what I said before. I think that I, I do believe that all of us like this world, and we also wanted to. I mean, for the future generations to have. I mean, the the whole idea of having kids when you keep doing this is that you want them to have a better life, in any way possible than you than yours, right? Yeah. Or at least have the, the option, uh, the choice, the freedom. And if we take away uh, the natural world, we're gonna, well, we're fucking that up, right? <laughs> so it's, it's a, it is a no-brainer. And because now that we have the science, we didn't have that 50 years ago. Now we, we have the numbers. We know exactly what's going on. We know this is man-made. And we also have the solutions. So it is a no, if we choose not to, to act, well, then we're just idiots, right? It's going and to I think be very... it's, I mean, I also think it, hap- it is happening. And also one of the, the big things that happened recently, I don't know if you've read about it, was that a number of CEOs from the, from the biggest companies in the U.S. came out and, and kind of changed the, the, the fundamental uh, values, if you will, uh, for, for since the 70s, 80s. It's been about profits been the most important thing. The shareholders have been the most important. And now they're saying, well, let's just look at that. It doesn't, there are other things that are equally important. And I think that is, is massive. Um, yeah. And also I got to, yeah, and it's, it's if, once we fall off the cliff, it's going to be so expensive to get us all uh, back in because the world is not going anywhere. It's not on fire. You're right with that. You know, it's such an important point to get out there. And I get infuriated when people look at the short term. Well, yes, it's also about hope. I think there's, it's important to know that we have the solutions. We yeah. have the choice. We can actually do this. But we also... We have to stop pointing fingers, I think, and, and, and shaming people. We have to accept that we are all, there's, I mean, we, what's the saying in English? In Denmark, you have, don't throw a rock if you live in a glass house. And, and we, I don't know what you're saying in, in English, but it's, 60% of all people live in cities. By default, the whole idea that you're sustainable, it's out the window. You're not. You might be vegan, but you're still fucking up. So, so, <laughs> so just accept that. <laughs> like there are people that most people in this world have very very little. We here in this we use so much and so much too much. So so the thing about it is like we have to include all. Also the world we want for the future, by the way, includes all. It also includes the people you disagree with, which is one of the beautiful. That is also biodiversity. Got to sit next to <laughs> Not that. Not just asshole. the bees. <laughs> right, no, but it's important. It's it's it really is important that that the, you know this. I mean, at least we live in a country with a lot of political parties, so there's a constant... But here you only have these two things that become so irrational. It's like going to a football game, right? So no matter what your team does, it's great. And, you know, why am I talking about this now? <laughs> We're talking about it, the I was, biggest... I was going to talk about hope. <laughs> hope, yes. The, the no-brainer part. I think also you look at companies like Google who recently have been doing what they can to buy green energy, but now saying, all right, we need to flip. We need to build green energy. So we're doing investments in Europe and in Chile and in the US to build so- solar power. Just because we got to do it. We got to build Maybe the infrastructure. Maybe you should start paying taxes to- as well. <laughs> oh! 
from the Danes. <laughs> I think that's European. Uh, <laughs> Push on that one, oh everyone. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, onwards. Ridiculous concept. <laughs> Big multinational companies paying tax. <laughs> Never I was going to ask how Google can help, but I think you just answered that. <laughs> um, let's uh, turn it over to some questions. I think. Uh... <laughs> let's turn it. <laughs> yes. Well, All right. Hey, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, how can I get involved with the Global Goals World Cup? I mean, just uh, write me. Uh, my email is mmg at airsoccer.com, and, and there's a million ways to help. You can, uh, you can create a World Cup. Uh, you can support teams. Uh, you can definitely lead actions in uh, doing things. So there's many, many ways. Thank you. That was one of my Great questions, question, too. <laughs> it's OK. I just thought of another one. We, we definitely right. want help. What did you think about the final episode? I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. We're not gonna go there. We all want to know, but I'm not going to ask that question. We're not here for that today. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, my question is actually for both of you, um, more so about how female athletes in this country are treated. One that stands out in my mind is when Serena Williams was playing, I think it was the U.S. Open last year or the year before, and she wanted to dispute a call, and the headlines and the news were horrible, and they called her aggressive when a male player doing the same would have been applauded, really, for trying to get the point. Um, and then, obviously, you look at our own U.S. women's national team, world champs, <laughs> but they're still fighting for equal pay. So wanted to get your guys' thoughts on how we as a society can kind of change the conversation and help our own female athletes in trying to be just perceived equally as the men. <laughs> well, I actually thought she was a little out of line. <laughs> no. But, but, no. But that's her right. I don't think she should be shamed more than a guy should be shamed. Right. But I still think that she lost it a little too much, as I would have thought if a guy had done that. But that's besides the point. Anyway, it's not besides that. That is the point. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the, what was interesting with the, 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 the women's soccer, uh, that the biggest seller on Nike was the U.S. women's soccer shirt, right? The jerseys, yeah. The jersey, uh, sold out, it was amazing. And I think, uh, and the attention it was getting in this country was enormous. And I think that sends a very strong signal to uh, the, the football governing bodies that, hey, we, and they, they are now, everyone's, oh shit, we have to do something about it. People actually care. And then of course, people also, companies will go, oh, there's money to be made, so we'll have to invest in this. I think it's, it's our responsibility, and it starts from, I mean, I know it was an ad, but there was this ad a couple years ago, I think it was for some skin lotion. But it was kind of stern because it was these little girls, and they were talking about how, like, that their perception of who they were. And when they were small, they were like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can run fast, and yeah, then yeah. suddenly they got older. Then now run I like run, a girl. And they became this fitting into how they were raised. Uh, we have a huge responsibility as parents when you have some of you probably have kids, but when you do. Um. I, I will also add to that one, and this is the, the, the experience that goes behind the scene. We see a little bit of a media and having a feel that it's, there's change happening. And, uh, but if you take just Title IX in this country, and if you talk to the, to, to the people that uh, got Title IX uh, uh, into the system uh, 40 years ago, but every year they have to fight that little thing that they constantly kind of moving the needle can we get a li little more space to the to the men's baseball team you know to, on on the college so they all this the endless fights that have to go on uh, the biggest change that we have seen in women's sport is that we've seen that women have stopped shaming each other so if, even though that we don't really know each other we've just kind of universally said that we're going to have each other's back and and i think that will be hopefully a a, a big push in the governmental level. But what I can see also some go governments are doing is that I was just a, a friend of mine from the former national Afghan national team in football. She was, uh, they have been suing the, the, their federation for sexual harassment on their team for an, for an endless period of time. And FIFA has uh, uh, banned him from uh, the football association. But then what happens is that he, that he goes into uh, our, she lives in Denmark now, she, he, and he goes into our country, and he sets up a press uh, uh, meeting, and he's countersuing her. 
So, so the level of stress on these people, and it's a really, it, it is a setup. It's a, it's a scam because, I mean, he's not going to spend the time on it, but he's definitely going to try to shame the crap out of her again and again and again and again and again. For, for of course taking his life away, right? But uh, so. Hang on, so what was what happened? I didn't get it. What was they it? they were so they they um, uh, they sued the the head of the football association in Afghanistan and FIFA oh, replaced him, back. and now he's suing back, right? So and and it won't. They, there was a press meeting in Copenhagen a few no, three weeks ago or something that where there was they were invited. They said the press is going to be there and stuff like that, and we sent someone out there just to find out what is this, right? And there wasn't really anything that it was a, um, any, a lawyer that had flown in and was sitting in this room and nobody showed up. But it was the, the, the level of, of uh, stress that there are still people putting on. So we have to be aware and we have to be able to speak about these things because, of course, uh, I mean, you still can't go to, to games in Iran and, and uh, there's still millions and millions of girls who doesn't have access to sports and stuff like that. So. I don't have the right answer. There's there's million little ways that people are fighting around the world, but as long as we keep putting the stories out there so people don't feel isolated and shamed. I mean, you had the stories about the Olympics, the, the gymnastics here, right? So, so uh, I, when I was listening to some of them, for them coming out telling their story, I mean, it was so horrific that they have felt so alone and so isolated for so many years, not being able to talk about it. I think. Wasn't it also a little bit like that in the film industry in the 80s, 90s, actually? A little bit that... Film industry now, still. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> where it was where you couldn't talk, you couldn't talk about it. Right. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm kind of embarrassed to say, I had never heard of the 17 goals until 39 minutes ago. And Good. <laughs> Perfect. So we, uh, now you know. <laughs> no, perfect. So my question is, how can we help promote them? How can I, how can we as individuals, and how can we as a company? Well, you Google 17 Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals. <laughs> Thanks. And you'll, because uh, Google is a great company, even if you don't pay taxes. <laughs> we don't pay taxes. And, uh, and uh, no, but, but uh, you, there's, I mean, the thing is, they're all, the great thing about them, very surely, is that they make sense. And it's just, it makes sense that we, should not consume more than we have, that we should, you know, educate ourselves and our kids, that we should treat each other with respect. It all will, it will all make sense. And I think you can do something in, in everyday life and those little things will actually make a difference. Can I just suggest that Google just borrow our framework for the Global Goals World Cup and make it an internally Global Goals World Cup so you can all have teams and you can all pick what goals are important for you within your divisions and you can play like every Friday or... So you get the movement in there in, the, in your company also. You yes, probably have that. Yes. But you could make an internal global goal for yourself. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so the thing that Nicola, Nicola um, said earlier about like shaming and pointing fingers and people not really like coming together, you versus me, think that really resonated with me. And what I've been thinking a lot about recently is like after watching Greta Thunberg's speech, I went to the comment section, which I probably shouldn't have, but there's like so many people criticizing her, trolling her, like, climate change non-believers, or even when it comes to gender equality, people who don't believe like sexual assault victims and things like that. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about like how can we truly come together if we're just not on the same page or agreeing about what is an issue, for example, or like just thoughts on it in general? Well, well I think that I was inspired. I saw this. There was a, what's her name? The Danish politician who, she is. Uh, what? Hi. Left left wing, she, she retired from politics, but she was getting all these, uh, she was an immigrant um, and she got all this hate mail and death threats and, and she was talking about how she, she did a TED talk and she was talking about how she a long time was, uh, just hated these people because obviously they were all Nazis and horrible right wing crazy ones. So she demonized them. To kill her, so you can understand why. But then she had this idea to do a coffee that she called it Coffee Talks. So she contacted some of these people who emailed her and said, Thank you for your email. Uh, I would love to sit down and have a coffee and talk to you. And then it took a long time, but slowly she started getting responses. And then she would sit down. And then she, she describes how she walked to the first, the first guy who that she was going to his house. 
And she had a very clear image of what it would look like, this house. And they would be probably like, he would have swastikas on the, on the walls. And then she came in, and it was just a, a, a middle-aged guy opened the door, invited her inside. It was a very nice home. It seemed very homely. And then they sat down, had coffee, and she realized, oh my god, I'm just the same. I've been demonizing this guy. That, I mean, he, is, he was the devil. He looks at me as I'm the devil, because I represent everything that he's afraid of. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Muslim immigrant, I'm a woman, I mean, and I'm in power. It's like, it doesn't get worse than that. But she realized through conversation, there was, they still disagreed on a lot of things, but they also had a conversation, and they broke bread. And, and I think that's kind of, the thing is, read comments where people are angry. That, that's, that's not the whole story about that person. Mm -hmm. It's funny, just before when you said that thing about Serena Williams, and I said, I actually thought she was out of line. For a second, and this is embarrassing, but it's true. For a second, I was like, I should maybe not say that, because people might get really angry online if they saw that. Like, we, we, we censor ourselves, because it becomes this whole thing about, now this is what we all believe, OK? So can we all give the thumbs up here? <laughs> you didn't give the thumbs up. What's wrong with you? You don't like women? Fuck, <laughs> you know. That, uh, <laughs> So that's my my only thing is just don't don't assume mm. even if you people say something assume they're no different than you. Mm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Nikolai has to run, but we have time for one more question. Okay. Let's. Yes. <laughs> Pressure's on. Uh, I have two actually. Okay. So first question: You have Power Platform, bunch of fans. I wonder if you'll share some of the personal decisions that you make to instill good behaviors and habits, like in your home and your life. Second question, we all as Googlers get a donation for our holiday gift. You know, chance to plug maybe some charities that you think we should have in mind when we're doing that over the next couple of months. You will. Um, First question was. <laughs> well, I, there's, God, there's, the thing is, there's so many great charities and there's so many. Uh, hope, if you know of a local one um, that does some work locally. I have and you support women around the world playing. Or by a, of course, that's what I meant by a football. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that you ask for a personal reason. Just or like for you in your home and day to day life. What, what we are do. Some, it's always it's kind of intimidating to feel like how can we make a change. What are some ways that you feel good about what you're doing? For the well, time? it's it's kind of the, the really the basic things uh, and and that will make. Um, I, I still, uh, I'm, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan, but I, I but we, we, we do, uh, we've increased that part of the diet a lot. Uh, it tastes really well, and then also it, it, it does make sense when you look at the numbers. Um, think about how you, we transport ourselves around, and all those little things, it's, it's quite, if you, <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny to say this when you Google. <laughs> I know it's not oh, funny God. for you. You're like it's work for God's sake. <laughs> um, but those little, like the little, like little switch to uh, LED lights, for example. If, if you look at a global, if uh, the impact that will have is enormous. Um, so it's no different from what you do, I'm sure. The, the little things. Now the final thing, I thought the ending of Game of Thrones was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.